Cougar fans, it is time. Touchdown! What a grab! It's time to raise your colors, raise your voice, and join in on the raucous roundtable about your favorite team, the BYU Cougars. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! It's time to tailgate. Cougar Tailgate, where BYU sports fandom lives. And here's your host, Lauren McClain. What's up, Cougar Nation? I'm Lauren McLean, and we're here to tailgate with you, doing what we do best, talking all things BYU Cougars. Joining me today is former BYU defensive back and current BYU TV analyst Brian Logan, a.k.a. Bilo. Good to have you back on the show. Uh, hey, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that... Um you know, we could finally put all this this basketball craze behind us. And moved. I've been waiting. I'm like, man, I, people don't ask me to come on no more. Like, <laughs> golly, I've been bored. So happy that football is, is finally back in the mix. When BYU football loses their first game, I'm sorry. I don't think they're going to be t- asking you to come on anymore either. No, I'm just kidding. I hope that doesn't happen. But last year, the media picked BYU to finish 11th, and the Cougars finished tied for 11th with Baylor this year. Media picked BYU to finish 13th yeah. in the Big 12. So we'll get into whether we agree with those rankings or not a little bit later. But in all honesty, Bilo, where would you say your excitement level is for BYU football heading into year two of the Big 12? I think I'm excited just period for football. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if if BYU football, for whatever reason, uh, was suspended and not play, I would still be happy, right? I'd be a little bit sad, but... I think just football in, in general, um, especially because there's four new teams that's coming in. Um, I grew up watching Deion Sanders. I'm a, I'm a Deion fan, uh, even though they're not on the schedule for BYU. But just just the sense of it being new, right, like the newness yeah. of it. A uh, little bit of unknowns with the quarterback situation. I, saw, I think that's always intriguing. Um, but, yeah, it's just exciting to be in a power fi- or a power four conference. I guess that's, that's yeah. the thing now. Isn't that weird? It, power it's, four. It's, weird it's, to it's say. Weird. It's pretty, it's pretty soon it's going to go to a power two. So uh, <laughs> we have to get used to that as well. But yeah, just the newness of it. I think yeah. uh, the unknown is, is what I'm most excited for, for sure. Well, you mentioned the quarterback. There's a lot of questions around the BYU football program right now. Yeah. One of the big ones is the quarterback situation. BYU football, they have seven players listed as quarterback. Here are the six we're keeping an eye on because Cade Finnegan – is taking more of a grad assistant role this season, so that frees up a scholarship. So he's kind of not yeah. in the mix anymore. Jake Retzloff, second year with the Cougars, will he be the starter? I think that's what everyone's presuming as of now. Gary Bohannon, transfer from South Florida. Trayson Borgay, transfer from Western Michigan. McKay Hillstead, transfer from Utah State. Noah Lugo, freshman out of Texas. And Cole Hagan, he's a return missionary freshman out of Corner Canyon High School, which I've heard really good things about. So traditionally the players who represent BYU at Big 12 Media Days – are the best players in the in the on the team, but none of the five BOU players who represent the Cougars are quarterbacks. <laughs> I I don't know. I mean, I know a lot of that's up in the air, and so that's yeah. hard to say. Okay, we'll bring you, but that I mean, is that a good sign? Is that a bad sign? Doesn't matter. That's a bad sign. Yeah, it's, it's usually the best player um, is going to be your quarterback on a successful team. Usually, right? right. Well, you, you know, you have a running back, but usually, I mean, you have your uh, offensive linemen and defensive linemen that are are strong in in you know both of of what they're trying to accomplish in the run game and stopping the run, and then you have a a, a stud you know running back, but you don't need like an all American running back. You just have somebody that can get the job done. You could same thing with the receivers. You don't need to have a like an all American receiver. You just have guys to get the job done. But you gotta got you gotta have a quarterback. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You have to have a quarterback to make it all run. And so the fact that like you said. Hey, we want to choose the best players because nobody wants to talk to the third string guy on the bench that plays the left bench. Nobody wants to do that. Um, that's not intriguing for us as media and even us as fans, right? So it is a little bit concerning that they they wanted to choose the best players and our quarterback, you know, wasn't yeah. a part of that selection. And obviously, a big part of that is they have not yet named a starter. Yeah. How concerned should BYU fans be about be about the quarterback situation right now, from your uh, perspective? I don't. Th- I think as a fan, they should be extremely concerned, right? Um, for me, in my experience, and you know, the I think the faith that I have in in Jake, I I, I don't think that it's an issue. Um, a lot of times, coaches play games with with their players to try to bring the most out of them, mm-hmm. and the coach like like A Rod can go into the locker room and practice every day and go, Jake's the guy. He could be talking behind closed doors with Kalani, like, oh yeah, Jake's the guy. But 
they're going to, you know, portray to the to the entire team and the program and media out there that hey it's a it's a quarterback battle we every every day you got to fight for your reps and in the back of his mind he's like no jake is really the quarterback but what but what is the benefit of that like why do that because like last year they had keaton slovis come in and yeah. they're like keaton's a guy yeah. from day one probably paying him some money right and yeah. so that was one of the reasons he came is like i'm gonna be the starter yeah. i don't know but I'm assuming so. This situation is yeah. a little bit different, but what is the benefit of kind of playing that game as a coach? I think two things. One is is you have to, as a coach, you have to know how to coach your, your players, right? That's the most important thing with the coaches. Uh, prepare them to, to play at the high level, but then also pull out that motivation from them as well. And there's some players that I've played with that if, if a coach, you know, kind of played those mind games, they would kind of sink and get depressed and be like, oh, my gosh, I suck. And I'm like, dude, you got a scholarship. You know, yeah. you're a D1 athlete. Yeah. And then there's other guys like me where if a coach would play a mind game to me, it would it would almost raise my level of competition, mm-hmm. uh, my sense of urgency. And so that could be, you know, one benefit there. I think the other benefit, too, is showing guys that you haven't, you know, you haven't arrived yet, right? You have to prove yourself. And, and we saw it with Jake, I mean. He went yeah, 0 four as a starter. Yeah. He, I mean, yes. I give him I give him a lot of grace, but also I think the I think why I'm so optimistic and and believe he'll be the starter is because BYU, I think except for one game, was was pretty close, right? Like almost beat Oklahoma, almost beat Oklahoma State. Yeah, he did have a lot of turnovers and I, I would say probably single handedly he <laughs> lost a game, mm-hmm. a couple of those games. Absolutely. Um but you look at when BYU was struggling prior to him coming on, the offense wasn't moving at all, right? Three and outs, three and outs, three and outs, lots of third and longs. And you actually saw BYU actually in games and competing. And that that's where I'm the most optimistic with Jake specifically and, and the offense is that they went from stagnant, struggling to, hey, now we're actually competing. So I, I see I see that light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, and he's not a guy you look at and you have no hope whatsoever in his abilities. He had some incredible plays yeah. and then some really boneheaded plays, yeah. right? It was yeah. like you had one side and the other. So there's moments you're like, oh, this guy could be the guy. Yeah. And from what I've heard, he has made big strides during spring. I know he's working a ton on his accuracy which is something yeah. he really needs. Yeah, for sure. And I'm sure Gary Bohannon is pushing him. They're both healthy. That's a huge thing. Yeah. Both those quarterbacks are really healthy right now, so there will be a good competition come fall camp. Yeah. Assuming if, there's if not there a, is. Yeah, I'm, if there is a competition. I'm telling you right now, there's no competition. So are you I, saying, do you think day one of fall camp, they're going to say, this guy's our starter? No, I don't think Do you think those, they'll let it stretch out? They'll let it stretch out for sure. But I, I believe that, that Jag's the starter. And, I mean, I might be a little biased because – I went to a junior college, and he went to junior college. And you don't hear too much about junior college players anymore just because the transfer portal yeah. and, and guys, you know, out of high school, now they're going to, like, an FCS school. Um, and then knowing, okay, let me go this route instead of junior college because with the transfer portal, I can always, you, right. know, you know, transfer to a, a D1 school or a higher level school. Um, and so a lot of the plays that he made that were bad – the interceptions, those were JC type plays. Yeah. Those were I, I call them like Madden plays. Like like, dude, throw the ball away, right? Or take this, yeah. take the sack yeah. and live to to fight another 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 down. And but he's like, no, right? I said, <laughs> yeah, he's like going all the way. Look, you know when you I, when I play Madden, I haven't I don't really play video games, but when I play Madden, I play with Michael Vick, somebody who's super fast, running four or three. I would do all <laughs> stupid type of things where I'm dropping back and I'm going 30 yards this way, 30 yards that way, and then just chucking it up. You know what I'm saying? And that's the JC <laughs> mindset that you have because you can get away with it. And and I think those lessons, what he learned was, especially in game, okay, everybody's actually good here. Yeah. Everybody's fast. Yeah. Everybody's big. Everybody's strong. And so now how can I get that competitive edge? I got to use my I got to use I got to use technique. I got to use my mindset. I have, I have to have more mental strength um, and football IQ to, to not make those mistakes, but still keep my team and put them in a position to win the games. And he was a world class junior a JC right player, right. Yeah. like very, yeah. very good. Yeah. And, and it's the thing, too, about JC guys is they're like when you go out of high school and you see all your friends have scholarships and you watching D1 games every day uh and and you still are looking at the the rivalries and you're like oh I'm I'm right there but you also have in the back of your mind this is my last chance so a mm-hmm. lot of times they call it what last chance you and so every day you you're going out you're fighting literally for that last chance 
Whereas a kid coming out of out of high school, they're like, I got four years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, yeah. or sometimes, too, they, they get there and they're like, oh, yeah, I arrived. Yeah. Like, I'm good. And so something that I've learned was to, to, to keep that mentality even to this day, right? Um, and so I always say, don't don't kind of JC kid up. It's crazy <laughs> things that you got to go through. And so to get here, you're 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 one. You're grateful, but you know where you came from. Right. And that type of mentality, I feel like you can't count out. And that's what Jack has. All right. A question I have for you, because we've heard very little about running backs mm-hmm. coming out of spring ball. Yeah. Uh, kind of scary. Right. Seeing what BYU did in the run game last year. Does BYU have enough talent at running back and receiver to make up for maybe some of the weaknesses of Jake Retzloff or whoever is named starting quarterback? Yeah, I think they do. Um, like I said earlier, I don't think a team needs to have that all-American type of guy. It obviously it, it helps out, um, but to, to with with me, I think the the focal point has to be the running game, and we saw the running game pick up when Jake got in the game mm-hmm. right when he started mm-hmm. playing and I think that that's just a rod style of what he wants to do you look at you know previous successful offenses he's had he's always had a dual threat quarterback and so if the if the running game is is on point which I think it will be now with some of the changes you know with the staff and and um you know players really gelling and meshing more together because we heard there was some little bit of cancer you know on the line and and Nobody wants to play with somebody as a jerk. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I, 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 I have to. Like I don't have to like you. You know what I mean? I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be content with you. But you know, think about that mentality playing, going on the field. I can't trust you. If I don't yeah. like you, I don't trust you. How how do I know if you're going to be in the right spot? I mean, so much chemistry off the field carries on the field. You right. know what I mean? And especially with a, with a unit like the offensive line, oh, where yeah. you got to be. You know, of one res- mind. It's literally one one heart, one sound, yeah. one mind. You know, one moving at the same drumbeat, and so I, I think a lot of those issues are are cleared up. And so, mm. if you have a good running game and, and you have those guys that you know offensively up front that can take care of their business, execute, you probably pretty much can put anybody back. You could probably go back there. You know what I mean? <laughs> We've already discussed this. Right? Of course, I could. No, oh kidding. yeah, I forgot. I forgot. You are an athlete. You are a bad. That's a bad example. Dave McCann could go back there. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Dave. No offense. No, no offense. Clip you, that off. Send it to Dave. <laughs> no, I, I, and yeah, when all the pieces around the quarterback are functioning as they should, mm-hmm. a quarterback can look a lot better. Not, yeah. I'm not saying better than he is, but they make him look good. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. So with, they weren't functioning last year. If they can function this year, I think we will see a different different type of quarterback play whoever it is back there. Yeah, I, I th- also too you 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 think about the the ma- the majority of the struggles when it when it comes to moving the ball and just being efficient was third down conversions, right? I think one last in the oh, nation. Yeah. Um and what what causes that is is being in third and 10 third and long situations. You just there's just really not a lot of plays for that, right? So um getting the offense to third and 3, third and short uh, you know, down situations. Now you can dictate to the defense: Am I running the ball? Am I throwing the ball? Now the defense doesn't know they're on their heels. So, from a strategy and scheme perspective, it makes it takes a lot of that load off of the quarterback. Otherwise, you'll see potentially like these third and sevens, third and eights, yeah. where you have a you know JC quarterback that for the first time he's thrown in, literally thrown into the fire, and he's like, "Oh, I'm trying. To, let me try to make this play on third and seven and is doing you know extra scrambling and fumbles the ball where I'm like dude it's it's the second quarter what are you doing <laughs> just chill, just take a knee pump the ball and and you know live to fight another down so I don't I don't think that you'll see yeah. those mistakes but again like I said being being a lot more manageable I think you take those type of situations or uh yeah you take those situations away from you know, a young quarterback that doesn't have that experience that's trying to, you know, win it all on every single play. Right. The Salt Lake Tribune wrote that Coach Satake didn't like having to bring in graduate transfer quarterbacks like last season, wanted to avoid the situation going forward. He wants to start players who know the system and have been in the offense for several several years. Theoretically, if everyone stays, BYU has options for the next few years. Do you think that's a realistic goal that Kalani has? I think so. I mean, do you agree with that? I 
I do. I do. Yeah. I like the idea of having someone that's been in the system that knows BYU and their schemes and everything instead of bringing in yeah. a one and done. Yeah. The, the first the first problem issue. I mean, I love I love Keaton and all that. The, just yeah. the, the issue, just in general, is if you're the starting quarterback on any team, Pee Wee, college, high school, JC, I don't care, whatever, flag football, like you're the leader, right? You are the leader, and it's hard to lead a program because a program is just that it's a it's an actual program, right? It's a well oil machine. There's so many different moving parts and pieces, and if you are bringing in a new leader every year, that's I mean, how could I get behind that, right? As yeah. as a as a player, if, if I'm look, we're all looking up to you by default. You have to, you decided to play quarterback at Pee Wee's. Like you got to take, you got to take this burden. <laughs> you know what I mean? You you got to take this burden. And so, how can a, a program be led by somebody that is constantly in and out? I think that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, you know, talking to Uncle B about this a while ago. And and I said, why are, why are you like the quarterbacks? Why did so many good quarterbacks come here? Great over the years, and he said, and, and knowing that you guys weren't going to start, and he said, well, we knew that all we had to do was play two years, so we were okay with going to BYU, knowing that okay, Steve Young is you know All American junior, going to be All American uh, um, senior, and I'm going to come in as a freshman, maybe red shirt, learn from him, learn the system, and then compete, and then boom, it's going to be my turn. So everybody didn't think. Like like a lot of these guys nowadays in college, where I'm gonna come in as a true freshman and I'm gonna start right yeah. away. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and so I, I I love I love that that idea of get these guys into this system and just let them wait their turn. Let them let them be more mature. We see where where, where BYU's had the most success is when you know there's been a senior quarterback or a junior quarterback, more so a senior that had you know multiple starts. You know because of that experience. And and the biggest thing is. You become a coach on the field. You can't. It's hard to learn a system if you're one in, one and you know, one and done. Right. It's no. You don't have time to to really fully get the grasp of what you know your offense coordinator is trying to accomplish. And it's hard to teach the other guys like this is where you need to be and you need to be when you're still That's trying it. to grasp it yourself. Mm-hmm. All right, Absolutely. coming up, we'll discuss what the rivals in Salt Lake said about playing BYU in November and how we feel about it. Plus, if we think we'll see offensive improvements in the Cougars' second season in the Big Twelve, this is Cougar Tailgate. Welcome back to Cougar Tailgate. I'm Lauren McLean with Brian Logan. BYU football really struggled last season. Where? Everywhere. <laughs> in the most facets of the game. So let's start offensively. The Cougars were 118th nationally in total offense. 90th in passing offense. 118th in rushing offense. They finished slightly better in total defense at 106th. 109th nationally in run defense. 91st nationally. Passing yards allowed. BYU finished last in team sacks a season ago with 11. During spring, the offense emphasized establishing the ground attack as its number one priority. Last year, that phase of the game was abysmal as the team ran for only 104.3 yards per game. A lot of those coming at the end of the season as well. BYU teams of the past have always thrived in a 60-40 pass-run ratio. What will be the style of style of play of offense this season, do you think, with the the returning characters BYU has? I think I think it'll be similar to the last three games that, that you saw. Um, again, the, you, you saw the playbook open up a lot once once Jake, you know, uh, uh, became the starter, and it was a lot more smoother, right? Like I said earlier, you you started to see the the offense, you know, actually sustain drives, and that was was the biggest issue and in, in why BYU ended up, you know, finishes the season with a lot of those stats right there is. Three and outs, three and outs, three and outs. You're not, you're not gaining any yards at yeah. all. <laughs> like, yeah. like literally, not gaining yards. Um, and and so, uh, I th- I think you'll see the same. I think, in in my opinion, a a Rod is. I, I think he is. I don't want to say genius, but he's very strategic in how he moves and operates. Usually, you want to run the ga- run the ball. You set up the pass. I like how the last couple years. Um, He's he's tried to set up the run by establishing the pass first, and you know so quick screens, a um, lot of short games, slants, you know quick outs to to get more in that the manageable first downs or third downs, uh, third and threes, and then you can go ahead and run the ball right. So if I spread you out offensively because you know I'm I'm throwing the ball over the field short game, now that box opens up for the running game. So I think that's why you see that ratio. 
Then on the defensive side, Jay Hill said recently, I know the scheme works. He told that to the Deseret News. As more guys become familiar with the scheme and believe in it, our defense will be better. We'll create more havoc, and we will get the ball back to our offense. What do you want to see from the defense below? After seeing what you did last season, what do you think they can accomplish this season? I blame a lot of the defensive issues and struggles on the offense. (laughs) (laughs) Of course you do. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just going to be real with you and say that. Um, Well, there is a lot of times, like I always go back to the Texas game, right? Three turnovers uh, or maybe four, 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 five turnovers. Three, I think three of those were uh, Texas scored on, right? And, and, and so you're you're putting the defense in horrible situations, mm-hmm. especially like towards the end of the season where Jake was throwing those those yeah. a lot of the turnovers, right? Um, I mean that pick six, like like B, BYU, the BYU defense didn't give up, you know what was it that thirty five points against Oklahoma? It was just twenty eight. So there was a lot of you know situations like that. So I think the offense having the mindset of of taking care of the ball is going to help the defense out a lot. But more importantly, something that they can control is is havoc. Right. I mean, that's like an actual metric now, which I didn't even know that that was the case. But when you can be disruptive and and offense is all about timing. Right. From blocking to especially running routes and and passing. If you can be disruptive and 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 maybe just have a small, simple delay in whatever area is is going to be, you know, it's going to put the defense in a position to make better plays. And that was a thing. Like you, you saw more blitzes and you saw pressures more than we've ever seen in the last couple of years, right? But guys weren't getting home and finishing the actual play, which is mm-hmm. you know getting those sacks. That's the most important thing. So like for a DB, I don't. It's cool that we get a pass breakup. You just did your job. That's fine. Like you're, yeah. you're literally supposed to not let the receiver catch the ball, but take it to the next level and get an interception. You know right. what I mean? And and start putting your offense that potentially could be struggling um, in situations that you know, they're going to have shorter fields or have more success, you know, because of that. I think one of the big keys is getting Ben Bywater back and healthy. I mean, that was a a big gut punch for the defense. I think he's that he's the leader and the captain, at least in those front seven. And then you get Micah Harper back who is healthy and that's going to make a big difference, right? Yeah. That, that'll be, that'll be huge. And see a lot of the guys that stepped up and and played, because there's, you know, kind of a lot of a rotation, you know, through injury because of injuries, on the secondary, and those guys, they they did their job, right? There was times where, like, I was like, oh, okay, this dude's balling. But now that, like, something that Mike can give you is what I said earlier, is taking it to the next level, getting yeah. those interceptions, you know, forcing fumbles. Most importantly, being the, the, the leader, right? There was a lot of times where the defense looked down and sad or kind of moping, and Mike is somebody that's a high-energy dude, loves to hit, loves to be physical, and all you need is for a guy like that to come and make a play come on. and smack somebody, and then it, it, it energizes everybody. Now everybody's like, okay, 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 yeah. let's, let's go. So bringing that that physicality um, you know, through Michael Harper is going to be absolutely huge, especially you know, Big 12 plays. We saw the, how physical and how big these guys are, so he'll be a huge asset. Yeah, and I'm sure having that game in and game out also wore on them a little bit, something they weren't super used to. Hopefully they'll be more used to it come this season. Uh, Big 12 Media Day is happening this week. Utah is ranked first in the conference, according to the Big 12 polls. Uh, Utah's seventh-year quarterback, Cam Rising, was asked about his thoughts about playing BYU this season, and he said, I want to go down there and whoop their – bums that's not what he said <laughs> but that's what we're gonna say he said that's the pg version uh i thought it was really funny what how do you feel about that kind of fodder between the rivals because some byu fans i'm gonna be honest they went yeah. crazy all offended by it i'm like i think it's great i think it's that's what the rivalry is yeah. about right yeah. let the players maybe take that to heart and use it in november first of all we're like months away from that <laughs> but i'm like let come on what do you what do you want him to say? Of course, he's going to say something like that. I think it'd be weird if he didn't say it. Right, like that's that. what I was thinking. I, yeah, it it would. Uh, as a competitor at this at this level at this high level, um, you want to win. You want to win, you know, convincingly, and and especially with the, in a rivalry game. So you know, something I didn't like that Bronco. This is probably the only thing. I, well, maybe two things. But <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I didn't like about Bronco was. How he just he treated the the Utah game like it was just another game, mm-hmm. and 
you, you I, I saw the difference in the the mindset and the mentality because I was I played 2009 2010 so 2009 we we you know we won in, in overtime uh Andrew George you know the, the catch yeah. I guess um and then 2010 uh and and in and, and and 2010 we lost I think three seconds left uh with a blocked field goal yeah. right so still a close game was that when the fans rushed the field not that wasn't no that okay. wasn't that one yeah no no but but you, you know, and on that team, the, the difference with those two teams, um, in in my opinion, was you had 2010, a lot of freshmen, right? True freshmen. You know, Jake Key was was a, a true freshman starter. Uh, my junior year, you had Max Hall, you had Dennis Pitta, um, Harvey, right, at running back. So you had a lot of guys that have played through that rivalry. So they didn't really need that pick me up from the yeah. coach, that motivation. So so we went into it like. Psh, yeah, this is better. I don't care what coach says, or I don't care. We may say this to the media, but we know we're in the locker room talking, talking smack, and, and we're prepared mentally. You know, mentally, I don't think that we that team in 2010 was as prepared because we didn't get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I love I love this already because I want these guys to go in. Yeah, I'm thinking week in, week out of my opponent, and I'm and, you know I'm going through my 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 game study, my film for that for that week. But I'm still in the back of my mind counting off the calendar. Oh, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm crossing off the days until I can play, you know, this this uh this rivalry, especially now in conference because it means a lot more. And especially because <laughs> BYU's almost at the bottom where Utah is at the tippy tippy top. Yep. So that's gonna yep. be an interesting dynamic there. As the season progresses, it's far enough along that things could possibly right, hopefully for BYU fans, changes a little bit, but we'll see what happens. All right, uh, defensive tackle for the Utes, Junior Tafuna, was a little less intense with his comments, but this is what he said. Yeah, man, uh, I'm still sore about that loss from 21. So, uh, you know, rekindling this rivalry, man, is a, is a great start in this conference. Uh, and I'm glad that it's going to be happening. I'm pretty sure every year, right? Pretty sure for the next couple of years. That's what it seems like, yeah. yeah it's going to be great, man. And, uh, and uh, man, wish them luck and uh, wish the best in the rivalry, but I know who I'm rooting for. And you get an extra week, all teams get a bye week before that game, so a little bit more touchdown. Man, that's good, man. We'll go to church and then we'll battle out the next week. <laughs> uh, he was nice, right? I mean, that's yeah. a lot nice. more tamed approach. You can tell that guy's from Utah versus Cameron. <laughs> 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 no, I love it. I love the I love the rivalry fodder. It's, and that's it's, that's funny. I'm I'd, I'd be more like you know like Cam. You know, like every every time I step on the field. I'm trying to send my opponent to to meet Jesus. You know what I mean? Like that's 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 my mindset, especially being a defensive player. Um, you know, and then yeah, I, I feel like afterwards, yeah, like we can talk about Jesus afterwards. But if if I don't send him to you before that, <laughs> if you're still here, if you're still, yeah, right, exactly. If you're still here, um, but that's just I, I don't know. I I think you have to have that that mentality. Like we always been saying these last couple of years, like we want we want that dog in you, right? So, um, you know, let's 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 mark this and, and remember this interview and let's see how both of those players um, you know, perform on the field. And I'm not saying and sometimes look, you may need to have a guy that uh or, or a player may need to be like low key, like um mellow in order for him to to be to be productive and, and yeah. execute at a high level. Most guys, I'm saying not that's not most guys. Most guys, I'm listening to, you know, Lil Wayne, you know, before the music. I'm listening to gangster music. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying, I'm trying to get into the character <laughs> of sending you to Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And so, but there's other guys I know that are really rare that listen to like classical music because yeah, they're they're just so their brain is just all over the place. So they try to you know calm down. It sounds like that that's the case with him. But you know, we'll 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 see. I think at the end of the day. Both guys are are competitors and just happy to to get back at at it and and especially you know the rivalry and like he said too like in conference and they're just having fun with it and so yeah. I want to know from a def- defensive player's perspective is that something come game time in November that they remember and take to heart and then we're like oh this guy said this we're gonna take him down oh, yeah. or do you not even remember or care oh yeah absolutely um we so <laughs> it's it's funny too because we'll even like in game. We will if if somebody is talking smack to us, like pregame, right? When we're warming up and wh- whatnot, and when we get into the game, I remember like Andrew Rich would come to me and be he'd be like he he huddle up the secondary, he'd be like, okay, guys, fifteen, number fifteen, and and what that meant to us was that, that's the target on his back, right? Not yeah. literally, like within the game, yeah. we oh, we yeah. but but like if I am making an attack, if I see somebody making an attack on number fifteen, I'm gonna come. And boom, give him a little bit of, of, of extra hit where 
if it was a different number, if if Andrew didn't call him out, I'm probably not gonna go and yeah. you know get that extra little oomph. Or if I make the tackle on him myself and it's a pile, I may get, try to pinch him or something. I don't know, <laughs> just something weird like that. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, they like players. We definitely remember that for sure. Try and pinch him. <laughs> I what try, is I, this? I may try to preschool. Well, you know, like I'm not gonna try to break his ankle. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, within the game, I might do. I may do. You know what? Also, which is funny too, like. And guys will do just like stupid stuff like that. I think when BYU played against Tennessee a couple years ago, like a D lineman took somebody's cleat and threw. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. I might so, so funny. So, it's like stuff like that. So like funny. you, you would like in the pile. It's crazy stuff that go in the pile. Like try to, I, I take somebody's towel. You know what I'm saying? I made some people like unstrap people's chain straps just to be goofy and <laughs> annoying. <laughs> yeah. That that shoe toss was one of the greatest moments in BYU football history. For sure. All right, we're gonna end with this. We mentioned this at the top of the show, but let's dig into what BYU was picked to finish 13th in the Big 12. Will BYU finish better than 13th in the Big 12, or does that spot seem just right to you? I think I think they'll finish better. I, th- I think BYU will win the games that they're supposed to win. But I also think that there'll be at least two games that they'll pull out that they weren't supposed to win. Mm. Um, so you think they'll be bowl eligible? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I think they will. Uh, you you look at Oklahoma. You look at just the last three games, and I just expect that momentum to carry over offensively, defensively. It's always like I'm just I'm just not worried about the defense at all. We we saw what they were doing. You know, I think those first five wins were because of the defense. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And like I said, offense put them in in situations that I don't think will happen this year. And we know how hard it is when when you come to play at, at Provo in Provo. You know what I mean? And and some of these teams are going to be their first time playing and them not knowing what to expect. And you have the elevation and it's a different world, literally in all aspects, <laughs> specifically yeah, football yeah. wise, it's a different world, you know, when you come to Provo. So I, I think uh, those are the type of, of games where BYU will be able to steal one. BYU's conference home opener, Kansas state, who is arguably better than the Utes, yeah. in my opinion, that is going to be tough. Um, I think they are right where they need to be. I think, of course, they can't pick them any higher than that, based on what they did last year. <laughs> yeah. Like they can't say, "Oh, maybe," you know, that yeah. they're not one. They're not hoping. They're not even guessing. They're they're basing it off the the terrible statistics that BYU put out last year. So I think thirteenth. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not slightly lower, honestly. But here's what I think: it's lo- lo- lower, like eighteenth. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. How many teams are in the, in the Big Twelve now? Sixteenth. Yeah, sixteenth. I think Kalani's going to throw everything at this season. Um, he does not want to have another losing season. He knows the tradition here. He knows it better than anybody else. He knows he can't afford to have another losing season for his job and, you know. Recruits, yeah. Just Tran- recruits and portal. everything. He brought in Gary Anderson, former Utah State, Wisconsin, and Oregon State head coach, mm-hmm. to be his eyes and to be an analyst for this season. Yeah. I mean, he's pulling out all the stops. Yeah. He's like, okay, we can't do this again, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to be huge, having him on the staff to help out. Um, I think he's going to pull out all the stops. I, I think he, um, I think he's going to he's going to prove at least a few more games than what it, I think he's going to have a winning season. I think he yeah. needs to, and I want him to. Well, Love the guy. I, I, I like I like what you said there because remember remember against Oklahoma State how um, he did a, a that fake punt, right? Yeah. And and but what do we see in Independence? He always did stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They always did like tr- you saw trick plays, like yeah. gadget plays. So many times when A Rod took over, you saw it, it. Just reminded me of the Boise State offense back in the day, totally. right? Where you totally. saw all these trick plays, and Kalani was like, "Man, I just finally, I just realized I got to get back to it. Even though we're fighting for a bowl game, but that's just I just can't be so uptight and got to yeah. be loose. And remember, he was going for onside kicks. Like I, I think, I think those, and everyone's like, "What are but, you doing?" <laughs> right. And so I just think that he, he, you know, was kind of going through, going to this in, into this new year, like with the unknowns. I think started to find himself and say, "You know what? This is who I've been. Who cares that I'm in a, a, a Power Five conference? Like, let me just go back to knowing how I coach." So I think we'll see a lot of that too. And that does it for us today. Thanks again to Brian Logan. Carter Bond and Tori Kimball helped produce this episode with senior producer Terry South. You can join the Cougar Tailgate wherever you get your podcasts or on BYUradio.org. Cougar Tailgate is a production of BYU Radio.